Welcome back to HuffPost Live. I'm Elodie Minkowski. Now, the Civil Rights Bill was signed 50 years ago. But as we've watched the events unfolding in Ferguson, Missouri, we're reminded of how much farther we have to go. An Arab American Institute president, Dr. James Zogby, highlights our struggle to move forward in his HuffPost blog, Ferguson is All of Us. And he joins us now. Dr. Zogby, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Now, you write, what played out on the streets of Ferguson, the standoff between demonstrators chanting Black Life Matters and Hands Up, Don't Shoot, facing well-armed police, is America's tragic, unfinished business in a microcosm. What do you mean by that? Well, look, the race has been the defining issue in American life uh, from the beginning. I call it our original sins. There were actually two original sins. There was the genocide against Native Americans, and then there was slavery. Um, slavery has been with us from the beginning, and it's uh, it's uh, the stain uh, and the, the crime of it uh, lives on. And uh, my, my point is that um, uh, it's gone through many uh, transformations uh, from, from slavery to um, uh, urban ghettos in the north to uh, the way it's been exploited by the Republicans using coded messages to, to win elections, uh, promoting fear uh, among, among whites. Uh, but uh, but it's there, and it's uh, the fear creates uh, this situation that we see in Ferguson, where you have uh, police not just uh, armed, but armed as if they were in Fallujah, uh, fighting as an occupation army. Uh, I think the scenes were were devastating, uh, devastating to many of us who watched it and thought. Is this our country? Is, what's 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 happened here? How, how how did we get to this point? And I think devastating to America's image abroad. Uh, I've read so many commentaries in foreign press, um, some poking fun, but others just wondering, what is this all about? What 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 is America uh, about when when this is how they treat uh, a minority community? Um, and I think it, there's issues here that we really can't let it get away from us. I mean, if Ferguson just goes away, um, we'll be waiting for the next one uh, with all of the, the, the problems in the intervening period. We must use this moment, I think, to address militarization of police, the persistent poverty and discrimination uh, against African-Americans, and the, the, the legacy of slavery and, and, and racism. And that's a concern, you know, that many people uh, have shown recently, too, is because currently we have seen the nation's attention really just fixated on Ferguson and when, when what's been happening there. But will it last? Or once all the cameras disappear, will we just move on to the next story? And so, uh, you know, you, you also say that we need to actually confront racism, confront, uh, you know, structurally what is going on in our country. How do we do that? Because I feel like we're constantly having these very, uh, you know, deep and thought-provoking discussions about doing it, but but how do you actually make that you know, turn it into some kind of action? Political leadership, um, and uh, you know, I, I write in the piece that I think many of us thought, hoped, when uh, Barack Obama was elected president, that it would it would help us advance this question. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the reality is that um, it didn't help us move beyond race. It exposed the depth of racism, and uh, the president became, in the minds of many, um, uh, part of the problem. I mean, it's as if um, middle-aged, middle-class uh, uh, white guys woke up in the middle of an economic crisis that was the most devastating since the Depression um, and said, uh, I'm losing my pension, I'm losing my job, my kids can't get, the American dream isn't going to apply to them. And there's this young, educated black guy in the White House. What's this all about? And turned on him with a vengeance. Uh, the birther movement, the the Tea Party. I mean, if you look at just the, the, the not you know the po the polling data um, about who is in the Tea Party and what their attitudes were, race was at the base of it. It was yes, it was economics and the, and the like that was there, but these were guys who weren't worried about the deficit as some of the, the leaders of the movement were. They didn't give a damn about the deficit. It was there was a black guy in the White House, and that bothered them. And it bothered them because they were suffering, and they felt that they weren't going to get the attention they deserved because he wasn't for them. He was for somebody else. And I think that, that 
you know, what was needed then were, were voices on the Republican side. Um, a, a George Bush should have stepped in and said, do not go there. Do not do this. Um, but there wasn't a voice on the Republicans. And the Republicans ended up playing with it, uh, playing with it as far as they could take it uh, for the purpose of exploiting it uh, for votes. Uh, but, when the, the well, Obama's a Muslim started, um, there were no Republican voices saying, stop this. They thought it was good for votes and they might win some elections with it. And so we need leadership that will confront it. But leadership has to come, I think, from the white community, white leadership that has to say, stop it. This is killing our country. It's destroying our image overseas. And it's dividing us in ways that are not healthy and helpful for the future. But do you think that that's also, uh, you know, the critiques that have been lobbed against this president that surely have been, you know, unprecedented talking about whether or not he was, he's even an American citizen or was born in this country, uh, many of which I really do think are, are deeply rooted in race, uh, you know, has that also kind of paralyzed this president in being able to talk about race and really deal with it head on? Uh, you know, because I, if you look I, yeah, at even so. what's happened in Ferguson and it's not, the, the president has taken a very measured approach, and it's people like uh, Al Sharpton, it's people like his attorney general, Eric Holder, that are actually going to Ferguson, making it more personal, talking about race. Look, I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, but this is, not a pre uh, this is not an issue that, that, that a black president has to solve. It's an issue that white leadership has to tackle head on. Um, and uh, we, we can't expect Barack Obama to uh, end the racist discourse uh, that has taken hold on the Republican side. Uh, Republicans have to take that on head on. There has to be a, um, a, a Jack Kemp plus, uh, the way Jack Kemp dealt with the, with the immigration issue. There has to be somebody there who will, who will challenge his own party in a meaningful way and in a sustained way um, to to reshape their outlook, their debate on this issue. Uh, otherwise, it will it will continue to be a partisan issue. Um, it will continue to make it difficult for a, a president like Barack Obama to raise, not only raise the issue of, of race, but also do a whole lot of other things he wants to do with the country uh, because he is viewed as the problem. I mean, look on the, on the Muslim thing. Uh, Barack Obama gave a marvelous speech in Cairo. It was a brilliant speech. It deserves to be studied as the analysis of the problem that exists between our two worlds and the way forward. But the minute he gave that speech, the Republican talking points were, he is the problem. He is the source of the problem. He apologized for America and he has sold our values down the drain. I was debating Liz Cheney the day of the speech. That was what she said. I debated George Allen the next day. That's exactly what he said. And I was asked by an interviewer, um, can this president heal the divide? And I said, I think he'd like to be able to heal the divide with the Muslim world. I'm not confident he's going to be able to heal the divide with conservatives at home because they're not going to give him a break. And they didn't give him a break. Lo, all these years, he has been facing down this demon and they're not letting go. And so I think that looking to him as the solution um, puts too much on his shoulder. It is a solution that has to be found with white leadership that has to challenge their own to say, Get with it, guys. This is not where we need to be. It needs to be a Bill Clinton uh, who will do a national dialogue on race again, uh, challenging whites and blacks to a different conversation. Well, uh, I think certainly a lot of people are still waiting and looking for someone to take that position, just like yourself. Dr. Zogby, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. It's a discussion we need to keep having. Thank you. Now, to read Dr. Zavi's blog, you can visit our resource well and stick with us. There's much more coming up on HuffPost Live.